When I was a little kid, there was perhaps no wrestler that I hated more than Ravishing Rick Rude. All gyrating his hips with his goofy curly mullet, his sissy painted pants. Disgusting. And then he's feuding a lot with the Ultimate Warrior, who at the time is my absolute favorite. So, you know, screw that guy. But, you know, you get older and as a wrestling fan, you start to realize that you hate guys like Rick Rude for the reasons that they want you to hate them. And you start to develop an appreciation for their craft respecting that a performer like Rick Rude can have the crowd eating out of the palm of his hands. That the Rude Awakening was a brutal finisher for its time, and just that in general he could put on a great entertaining match. But then a freak accident in a match with Sting cuts his career short, only to years later show up one night in ECW and start a whole new phase of his career. He's not wrestling, but he's there and he's making sure his presence is felt. And all these kids who grew up hating Rick Rude, all of a sudden they're grown up and now they're fully aboard the Rick Rude train. This reinvention eventually leads him to being the only person to ever appear on both WWF Raw and WCW Nitro at the same night at the same time. And another tidbit that I often see left out of this trivia, he also made an appearance on ECW Hardcore TV that weekend. So he was a force in every big wrestling promotion all at once. Meanwhile, there's reports of him training for an actual return to in-ring action. So this guy, who's often counted among the very best wrestlers to never have the world championship, he's getting ready to finally take his place at the top. And then suddenly, in 1999, seemingly out of nowhere, he passes away at just 40 years old from heart failure. Now, if you're a fan of wrestling, you know that young, tragic deaths aren't a rare occurrence, especially with guys of Rick Rude's generation. But this death in particular is haunted by a bizarre urban legend. An urban legend that's largely been pushed by some of his former colleagues. The rumor that he had taken his own life after he had to undergo a penile amputation. So for this video, let's take a look at what really happened to Rick Rude. This video is sponsored by Factor. Lately, I've been thinking about how often I order food. And even if you're not eating that much, those delivery fees and all the, all the little hidden charges, they add up so quickly. But then what happens is you see how much you're paying for delivery and you do this little math in your head about how much you have to eat to make it actually worth it. And then you just fill up on unhealthy food that you didn't even really want to begin with. If you do that same thing, Factor is a better alternative that helps you avoid fast food with chef-prepared meals that take the guesswork out of eating well. You can pick meal preference options like keto, calorie smart, and vegan. There's more than 27 different meal options each week. Meal plans range from 4 to 18 meals per week, and you can add or reduce the number depending on your needs. You can also modify your food preferences or skip a week if you need to. On their website, you can look through the upcoming week's menu and take a look at the dishes that catch your interest with a description and a full nutrition breakdown so you know exactly what you're getting. Use my link in the description below or go to go.factor75.com. Use code FACTORSE44236 for 50% off your first box. When it comes to wrestling trivia and stories and myths, I like to think that I'm a pretty knowledgeable guy. But somehow, this urban legend had just completely flown under my radar. In fact, as it turns out, I had completely misremembered the nature of Rick Rude's death. I had thought that he had died of testicular cancer. Because you see, it was widely reported in 1998 that he had testicular cancer. But in truth, it turned out that he had a spermatocele which is a relatively common type of benign cyst that's often mistaken for testicular cancer at first. In fact, Rick Rude had died in April of 1999 due to heart failure, likely related to an overdose of the medications he was taking. Although it's generally accepted that this overdose was accidental, there are those who think that it was on purpose. And that's where this urban legend stems from. If he did it, why did he do it? What led me down this rabbit hole, of all things, was Gunther's Intercontinental Championship reign. On September 8th of 2023, Gunther became the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time, surpassing the Honky Tonk Man's record. Which of course leads to a lot of people online talking about Honky Tonk Man. Me personally? Not a fan. You know how at the beginning of the video I said that Rick Rude was the kind of guy that would make you hate him for the reasons he wanted you to hate him? I found Honky Tonk Man to be quite the opposite. And I know a lot of people disagree with this take, but to me with the Honky Tonk Man, it wasn't that, you know, he would piss me off and I want to see him get beat. It was that I thought he was boring and I didn't want to watch him. 
Honky Tonk Man comes on and I want to change the channel or fast forward the tape. It's like that one sign that a fan brought to a show a few years back. Sir, I feel compelled to stress that we are not booing because of your effective heel work, we are booing because you are simply awful. But while Honky Tonk Man isn't everyone's cup of tea in the ring, there's a lot of people who find him distasteful for reasons outside of the ring. For example, his attempts to get Jake the Snake Roberts to start drinking again after he finally overcame decades of alcoholism and drug abuse. Or when he made fun of Bret Hart's stroke on kayfabe commentaries. Who would you rather work with? Who would you rather have matches with for the next 5, 10, or 15 years of your fucking career? Me? Or Goldberg, who kicked you in the fucking head and gave you a goddamn stroke and now you drag your foot around and you can't even get your dick hard? Eee, my hanging out. So, you know, then you got a bunch of people sharing their favorite Honky Tonk Man is a piece of shit moment. But amidst all this, I see something that I had never seen before. A quick backstage interview with the Honky Tonk Man taken in 2015 by Hannibal TV. In the clip, he comments on Rick Rude's death. He injected Viagra in his dick because he thought he could get an instant hard on. And he could fuck a lot of broads, but instead he got an infection and his nuts swelled up the size of cantaloupes, so they had to cut everything away from him. And then he went home and killed himself. What a way to go. Now at this point, even if you have no prior familiarity with the Honky Tonk Man, you have no idea about his reputation, maybe you're not even a wrestling fan at all, you're probably just like, yeah, sure buddy. You know, he just doesn't have the kind of credibility to be taken seriously when making such an outlandish claim. But the thing is, he's not the only one that's made this claim. Hannibal has another interview with the wrestler Ken Patera. I feel like a lot of you guys might not remember Ken Patera, but the image of him getting whipped over and over again by the Heenan family just burned into my memory. And in the interview, Ken Patera agrees with Honky Tonk Man's story, saying that he had heard it from Jim Neidhart. I heard about it. Two days after they found him dead on the floor, I heard from, about it from Jim Neidhart, because Jim Neidhart and Rick Rube were real close friends. And I think at that time, Neidhart was living down there in Florida. I, I think they lived real close together. And uh, he said, uh, Rick just lost his fucking mind because they had he had to go to the hospital and they're gonna amputate his penis. Well, his penis was the most dearest thing to him. To my knowledge, that's a true story. Unfortunately, Jim Neidhart is no longer with us to be able to comment on this story, but Hannibal continued to pull on this thread in another interview with John Nord, who you might remember as the Berserker. Not to mention his rant about pancakes, which may be one of my favorite wrestling promos of all time. They eat a lot of pancakes! So in the interview, Hannibal asked John Nord about Rick Rude, and here's what he had to say. Uh, I want to say back then, like right after it happened, I think it was Kurt and we all talked about it. And then that's what we had heard that exactly that, you know, he was sh shooting up to, you know, I mean, Rick had that, I guess you call it demon of, of, you know, he just wanted to get kinky as hell and get numb and, and then he would you know, actually shoot it in his pecker. In the interview, John mentions that he had heard the story from Kurt Hennig, aka Mr. Perfect. But like Jim Neidhart, Kurt Hennig is also unfortunately not with us anymore. However, shortly after Rick Rude's death, Kurt Hennig had actually published a letter about him. And in part of the letter, he addresses some of the rumors about his death. I don't want anyone to lump him in with those stories about wrestlers abusing drugs and steroids. Rick Rude was not on anything heavy duty. He may have been taking some pain pills for his ribs. I've heard some people say his death was a suicide. No way. He was too much of a man to do that. If he had a problem, he would face it. He would look death in the eye. He wouldn't coward out of anything he did in his whole life. He was the most stand-up guy I ever knew. I learned so much from him about being a man. He was a man's man, 100%. So clearly, from what Kurt writes here, he's not 100% sure whether or not the death was accidental. But clearly, he thinks it's very unlikely that it was on purpose. So I highly doubt he was just going around spreading this rumor about him. So then, essentially, that just leaves us with this game of telephone where two of the supposed originators are dead. And one of these dead men left behind public statements that contradict the story. Something that did raise my eyebrow with this, though. 
It's kind of strange that you only seem to start hearing about the story 15 years after Rick Rude died. But as it turns out, a user of the Wrestling Figs forums, NYStyle4683, did manage to find a mention of it that was posted mere months after Rick Rude's death. In a Google Groups thread about Rick Rude's death, a user named Jet Green says, How come the article doesn't mention anything about his pecker falling off due to gangrene? After he shot so much Viagra into it to get a hard on after losing his balls to testicular cancer. Woo! Can't believe I got all that in one sentence. We want the real facts, not some cover-up. Now, as I said before, it turned out that the testicular cancer scare just turned out to be a benign cyst. But as you can see here, the amputation rumor had been going around as far back as 1999. And reading this post, I can't help but think that this urban legend exists because of the cancer scare. In fact, thinking back, I don't think the story that it turned out to not be testicular cancer ever really got a lot of traction. As I remember it, and granted this is going back a really long time now, the way I remember it was, it was reported that he had testicular cancer and you didn't really see him anymore, and then it was later reported that he died. Which of course is going to lead to a lot of people trying to fill in the blanks. And you also do have insiders who explicitly deny these rumors. For example, there's Bruce Pritchard. In his podcast, Something to Wrestle, his co-host Conrad Thompson asks him about this rumor. Here's what Bruce had to say. I think it all sounds extremely silly to me. And from what I know of Rick Rude, he was not the type of guy that would even consider... Have you ever heard any, anything as silly as guys injecting Viagra into their penis? No. Had you ever heard this before? No. This is all brand new information to you? Yes. So you're going to chalk this up as bullshit rumor and innuendo? A lot of rumor and innuendo. Okay. Something else you have to consider about this story. Is this even possible? I asked one of my friends, an actual doctor who you're probably familiar with, Chubby Emu. These were his quick thoughts on the matter. That's an interesting case. I suppose injecting directly there could have some benefit compared to taking a tablet, but the risk of side effects could be way more. For the infection, it depends. If it was like an abscess, think giant zit on the shaft, it would have needed to have stopped blood supply flowing there for some time, causing parts of it to die for the tissue to need to be amputated. So we're not talking like an instant cell death but rather it would have had to have been something that was allowed to sit there for some time untreated. Which, I mean, considering if this were true, how embarrassing of a situation it would be to explain to a doctor, I could see a person doing that. But it would take a lot of damage for absolutely everything to need to be removed. And the pain would probably be unimaginable before you got to that point. And then you have to remember, Viagra only came out in 1998. So then you're working with this very small time frame there where he would have had to have come to the conclusion that taking it orally is no good. So you know what, I'm just gonna skip a million steps and in inject it directly to an area where a normal person spends most of their life trying to avoid any sort of pain or any sort of damage. I mean, granted, for anything that you could think of where the question is, why would someone do this? There's probably someone that's done it. You know, like one out of a million guys will do that. But to me, this just doesn't pass the smell test. Furthermore, if you made a movie and Rick Rude was a fictional character in your movie, and this was the ending for him, I would say, come on, that's a little too on the nose. Get a little more creative. Because for a wrestler like Rick Rude, his sexual prowess was just so intrinsic to the character. You know, he's this womanizing ladies man, the women can't get enough of him. And he's more than happy to run through all the best ones. And on top of that, in his actual matches, he would play that up where his crotch was kind of this vulnerable point. To illustrate it for you perfectly, understand that there is an entire Twitter account dedicated to Rick Rude's over-the-top selling of Atomic Drops. So you've got this person whose entire life basically revolves around his dick, and he dies of losing his dick. It sounds like something that people would be inclined to make up and believe just because it puts a neat little bow on everything, but personally, to me, that just sounds like bullshit. But anyway, that's all for now. If you like this video, be sure to turn on notifications and check out my video about Hulk Hogan playing bass for Metallica. I'm out.